Lance, last week before the Tech game, it was announced that you got a one-year extension to your original contract. I guess what did that mean to you to have that happen? Um, well, it, it's very humbling and uh, appreciated uh, uh, through you know, Travis Goff and Chancellor Gerard that uh, they've, they've seen some of the progress that we've made in the program as a, as a staff. And, you know, this is, um, again, a continue to work towards stability and, and building this program the right way. And, um, um, you know, it's things that we've talked about of, of time sometimes and of not, not like it, the time it'll take, but the time to maintain stability and do it the right way. And, and the timing of the hire, as we know, um, was very unique. And uh, so all those things are greatly appreciated. And, um, you know, to, to to announce it before we, we kicked off is is good because it it ends a little bit of speculation that, that some of you all may have and things like that, and we get to go back and, 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 you know, doing what we need to do. How did it come about from your perspective? Like, who approached who about it? Well, I, you know, where that came, there's been, I mean, those were discussions sometimes just in the holistic view that, that took place a little bit during the interview process, but more, more, um, a couple casual conversations and, um, shoot, I don't even remember what day it was that Travis, Travis was in my office. Uh, might've been, um, it was one of our practice days. It might've been Sunday or something. Saturday or Sunday came in and we were, we were talking, I was about to head to a staff meeting and, um, he said, "We'll just hold on a minute, and um, we we talked about a couple things, and then at the end he goes, we're going to add a year to your contract, <laughs> and that's about how it went. And I went on to the staff meeting and thanked him, and and um, then communications and other people handle when when it was released. To kind of build off that, is that something that you you bring up on the recruiting trail, talking to prospective players? Um, you know, we'll you know." We, we've talked about our stability through the years. I think, you know, we've talked about that since we arrived and, you know, with our staff and the amount of people that have worked together um, and, and that continuity and stability is, is something that we have talked about. And I, I think, uh, you know, this extension will give us something else to, to, to kind of add to in that. Yeah, I, I think that is when, when you're looking at what this program has gone through, um, those, are, those are good signs to the locker room recruiting, fan base, anyone that's affiliated with this or could be at some time of their life, I, I think that's all all good. And, you know, the um, majority of us, I, I think in our group, we I don't think we have a lot of job hoppers on our staff. That's not how I've gone about my thoughts in hiring. Uh, most of the time is sometimes you end up in situations where you know a guy will be with you for a year or two, but holistically, um, you, you look at my career, um, we've been able to matriculate recruiting classes through, okay? You don't see that very much anymore, okay? You don't, you know, it's not 10 jobs in 14 years or something like that. We're going we're gonna to look at it, and that's kind of where it's always been in our mindset. And going back to Friday then, now that you've had the chance to look at the film again, what do you feel like you learned about your team after game one? You know, um, things that we're hoping to see, that we have good depth, uh, you know, and, you know, within the drop, or I say between the guy who maybe went out there first, the guy that went out second, um, we got some good things there. Um, we we handled our business in a, in a game that, you know, uh, you know, in all respect, we're, you know, Tennessee Tech's in a building process themselves. And, and that was a game that uh, we probably should have handled and, and, and didn't, didn't let that get away from us or, or, or play through it the way we needed to, I guess, is the, the best way to say that. So I appreciate that approach to us. We, we generated those bigger plays. We, we created... Um, you know, you saw what Lonnie was able to do. You know, a lot of things there that, that kind of played off each other. So, um, and then, of course, in coaching, uh, true coaching uh, fashion, we uh, saw plenty of things that have to improve. And, uh, and those are, are being addressed already, and we'll, we'll continue to do that. Well, I come to my own little deal. Whoever this Sirius XM in Topeka, stop calling me, okay? I'm not taking your call, okay? They call like twice a day.
Coach Neil Brown had kind of a passionate message on Twitter for their fan base about losing a rivalry game and how much they'd invested in it. How difficult is it to be in that spot where, especially the first game of the year, you're playing a rival, to be able to turn the page as a program, forget about what just happened, the bad, and go forward? Well, um, you know, I'm not not in their shoes per se, but, you know, that was a big game that they hadn't played in a long time. And, um, you know, there's a lot of positives to that by playing on Thursday night. Um, probably, you know, great energy focus and, you know, emotional energy can be spent. And, you know, but it was a Thursday game and now we play on Saturday. So, um, you know, young men across the country are pretty resilient. OK, so I think and then to follow it up with a with, with a uh, conference game probably is probably the next best thing to grab grab a team's attention. That's but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm more focused on what we need to do. I know Neil is, uh, you know, we you know, we've played him obviously last year. We competed against him when he was at Troy. He's an outstanding coach. He's an outstanding offensive mind and um, they've done a good job. Uh, you know, making additions to their program, and I know he'll have them ready Saturday night. JT Daniels played at USC, played at Georgia. He's their starter now at quarterback. Uh, Donaldson was listed at tight end and played running back and blocked a punt, had newcomer of the year honors in the Big 12. So he was probably a surprise to Pittsburgh, but after watching him on tape for a game, what were your observations on <laughs> CJ? Pretty nice, uh, you know, uh, what do they say? Uh, first time uh, playing in college football. That's a pretty big, uh, um, you know, uh, first start. Uh, what you know? Obviously, if they listed him there, played him in other spots. Not only for a freshman can handle a lot. He's uh, very talented on special teams. A big body to tackle. He's a he's a special athlete that. Uh, Obviously, uh, they did a great job evaluating and getting him there, and I'm, I'm sure they'll uh, they'll continue to find ways to utilize him, and and that's going to be a challenge for us anytime you have a, um, someone with that type of athletic ability. Along with, you mentioned J T. Daniels, a very experienced. He's been through um, a lot of things in his career, and um, experience environments won't bother him. Um, He's back in an offensive system in which he started his college career. Uh, so he's, you could see it uh, on film, very comfortable in that. And uh, you can see they're operating at a pretty good level. And that was, uh, that, that was quite a football game that could have went either direction uh, Thursday night. Lance, you, you mentioned uh, grabbing their attention with, with the conference game. Mm -hmm. Same for you guys, obviously. Yeah. And, and Friday night after your win, there were a lot of guys in here, your guys, talking about yeah, but that's next. Yeah, but that's next. Yeah. Did did you emphasize that um, in the you know, offseason leading up to that? Or was that them? Or where did that come you from? You know, there were some guys in the locker room I was very impressed with, even some guys who don't speak up a whole lot that, that were very much in that mindset right away. And um, that that's a great sign of maturity and understanding and that, uh, yeah, let's celebrate this, let's enjoy this. But, yes, there there's more to come and there's more that's going to happen. And, and the challenges are going to increase in, in a lot of different ways, uh, you know, by leaps and bounds here very quickly. And and uh, and and to see that is encouraging, you know, really is. And it's uh, and we have to maintain that mindset as we go through because, uh, you know, this is a, a a challenging schedule that we have to be ready for each and every week. You made it clear that you you're a big believer in you play who's on your schedule. Um, <laughs> Would you rather have a couple more, you know, non-conference games to kind of work the bugs yeah. out before you jump into conference play? Or does it matter? And I guess what are the advantages and, and maybe disadvantages of, of doing it this way? You know, I wasn't here for scheduling and, and things like that and, and, and where things play out. Somebody asked me this last night. Um, and I said, well, you know, you, you, you struggle to fit your schedule non-conference-wise and you're looking for different things. And sometimes when you fit the three – you know, you, you had to go into week four, maybe. So then you have to look at now, what, would I rather play, you know, right now, standing here before all of you, I'd rather play a conference game week two than have an open week and then go 10 more weeks. So by playing this game and having that open week later in the year, uh, I think is beneficial. So, um, 
Yeah, do you want to go on the on the road um, week two to a conference game? Probably the in help me geograph right our furthest travel right now currently and the you know all those things are not um, you know for a night game and then not to get ahead of ourselves to get back late and then play, go play another you know that's not ideal but you know we we have to do it and we'll handle it I mean and and now we just got to find a way to go out and play well what's the biggest point of emphasis for your guys and in, in the jump in competition from from week one to week two what they're going to need to to take well, care of um attention to detail physicality um you know being being ready to uh you know we talk about um you know especially on their offensive side the weapons the size physicality uh, you know within the line both lines um defensively they've upgraded i say upgraded they've added transfers i mean you, you look at, you know, people talk about what we've done. I, I, you know, they've done a great job utilizing the portal as well. Um, so, you, you know, when you're playing game 12 a year ago, it doesn't really equate to the pieces that we're going against. We mentioned a true freshman and, and a former five-star quarterback that's transferred in, let alone about five defensive starters. So that's a different football team, and, and we've got to prepare for that. And, um, you know, we didn't, Devin didn't play the last game last year. There's some different pieces to us as well, and we've got to be able to, to go out there and execute. You mentioned West Virginia's physicality up front. Mm -hmm. On Friday, we talked about how good the front seven looked. Kind of what type of challenge does that front seven face now on Saturday? Our front seven? Yeah, yeah again, uh, um, you know, uh, their offensive coordinator, Graham Harrell, and as well as Neil Brown are great offensive minds, and they find a way to keep you off balance. They're, they're going to take their shots downfield. They're going to get the ball out to the perimeter, and now they've got a big phys couple, couple backs, but one big physical back that was able to you know hit some creases on it as well. So you've got to be able to defend the whole field and, and, and stay physical without that and tackle well and, and get people around the football. With, with your offensive line, how do you feel like they did blocking for the run game on Friday night? I thought we did, you know, it was it was good, you know, but it, again, that's going to change. Um, you know, we're always going to look for improvement. I, I thought the first unit and then some, you, you saw each each back show a little bit about what their, their strength is. And, and uh, you know, again, there's, but I always say there's going to be, you know, I, I think our statistics showed itself, but we, we've got to continue to take another step too. Hey, Coach, with Lonnie winning Defensive Player of the Week, mm -hmm. you saw your offense, obviously, what they can do. Jalen Daniels, I think, was believe above Bryce Young with quarterback rating, according to ESPN. So what does that kind of say, you know, with how Jalen can kind of handle the offense? And I think there was something else, too, that your offense was number one through the first week. So what does that kind of say that, you know, I, I know it's a small sample size, but what does that kind of say about your team? Well, it, hopefully it, it means we've taken the, some steps. And as we say, it, you know, we're – you know that that's in the rear view already. So we got to take another step this week. But I think the improvements are there that that we had hoped for. I think Jalen showed himself. You know, as we go through this, um, I don't know if Jalen's even coming in today or not. But if he was, he's probably going to talk about the two throws that he wish he had back. You know, the fourth down throw and the interception. So, um, but his command and his presence and and overall accuracy was very well was very good. And and uh, you know he's he's ready to. Again, it's going to be it'll be a little different, you know, Saturday night. And but I, I know he's feeling good about what we're asking him to do. Coach, ball security is always going to be important for coaches to talk about. You did give it away a couple of times, but it didn't hurt you that much point wise. Ball security, something that's even emphasized more this week before this game. Um. Well, yeah, you, you're going to talk about it. If you come out to our practices, if you're ever there, like during camp, I mean, we 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 do it all. We do it all the time. I mean, um, you know, one of our one of our analysts that's new said, you know, some people talk about ball security and kind of do a couple things. You know, this program really does it every day. I mean, we're doing something. So that, was it disappointing? Yes. Is there more attention to detail? Um, you know. Uh, again, across the country, we talk about a lot of that is, you know, between special teams and turnovers, you see it a lot early because you just, there's just so limited live stuff that you do that, you, you know, you're trying to replicate it in different ways. But uh, we have to, we have to be better there. I, I do like the point that you said, I thought sudden change, our defense handled really well. I think one time they, 
They might have got a field goal on one of them. I think we held them maybe the first time, field goal the second, and then they missed the field goal the third, something like that. And so I thought we handled that, and you know, and and that's about as good as you can do in those situations sometimes on short fields. Does your team have confidence where where you would want it to be, expect it to be, need it to be heading into this part of the schedule? Yeah, I think so. I, I do. Um, I think they're they're understanding that, um, you know, conference games going to be slightly different than than playing a home FCS game now, and and but uh, that this is a different football team than than what we were a year ago for the better, and uh, but they also know this is probably going to be a a uh, a big test on the road of of truly an evaluation of where we are early okay it's not going to be a do or die of where we're at or where it's going but it's going to be a step along the way but i do i do think they understand it and that goes back to the other question that you had about where things are at and 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 that's what i like about this group any update on tanaka or trevor um um you know tanaka is practicing and uh um We'll see how how that progresses for for game plan, but uh, he is available if if there and um, and Trevor is still suspended and uh, and the word indefinitely still there until we find out some uh, you know some other answers yet. But and hopefully hopefully that can be sooner than later. You, talk, you talked about in fall camp about having tough decisions to make about players to bring on a road trip. Mm -hmm. Do you feel good about the guys you're going to take? Where are you at in terms of the narrowing yeah, down with, the travel with, roster? Yeah, this game, you know, we're we're at a 70 a travel roster, so yeah, we're, you know, we took more than that to the home hotel uh, this week because it, you know we felt you got to draw a line somewhere, but um, that uh, you're always, uh, you know, as you're looking at it, and hopefully you stay healthy and do those. But um, we got a good idea where that'll be. There's there's always. You know, like I say, it's a lot. It's it's more challenging than trying to fill it. <laughs> you know, um, you know, it's a different type of problem, I guess. But uh, I think we'll be in a decent spot on on this as we've gone through the first game, and it might be by injury, it might be by matchup, it may be, you know, how many where where we have flexibility and also player development through the season.